Hey everybody, this is Atlas Sniperman, and I'm going to be looking into doing something that hopefully fans of my writing will appreciate. I'm going to try and show my process and just show off, without really showing off, as I uh, play through and write a Nuzlocke fan fiction thing for a Pokemon game. Okay? So it, it shouldn't be too difficult to get started anyway. First couple things we've got to do, if you're interested in even watching this, is figure out what game we'll be playing. I have three games picked, either Fire Red, Platinum, or White. I'm thinking Platinum, because... No, no, I'll go White, it just has more Pokemon. And if I hit a randomizer, then I'll be able to encounter a larger range and variety of Pokemon. So I think we'll be playing Pokemon White. Next up is figuring out what kind of character we're going to play. Now it's a, it's a tricky thing because creating a character is a thing that many people have whole video series dedicated to. And of course a character, any character I make during this is going to change over the course of the development of the story and be reflective of what I encounter throughout the story. But in my Nuzlocks, I like to create slightly superpowered humans. Yeah, I know. Sue me. They, um, every Nuzlocke protagonist I have has a type or two types and a number of Pokemon abilities. Basically, there are three stage evolutionary lines starting off as normal and then gaining the types that they want later on. I also like to give all my characters a sin, it just, it's a thing, and an emotion and have them embody that sin and emotion. It, it makes it a bit easier rather than picking an archetype for the character to be, if I just pick personality traits that people recognize easily and build off of that. So the things I know that, the, that I'll need to pick out for the character, likely after I start playing a little bit, are types, abilities, sin, and emotion. That, that's not to say the character doesn't do, like, indulge in other vices than the sin they've already got, and that they don't experience emotions other than their main emotion, it's just that they have that emotion most often, or they uh, cause this emotion in other people. Okay, uh, it's also fun, <laughs> I say fun, it helps to connect a character to, connect the information about the character, the underlying stuff about the character, to the story I want to convey even before I enter the Nuzlocke. For example, in one of my stories, the character was a martial artist who had a, a slight issue, but uh, his two types were ice and fighting. And that, that played fairly well with the story of Omega Ruby, because it's all about uh, stopping people from ruining the world in some fashion, and he had a distinct weakness to the type that is the opponent. But he wasn't overly weak because there's also ground in that, so it balanced kinda well, and I was able to play on the whole mega evolution thing that was building in that story with that character. So I'm going to put character creation on hold for a while, because that is going to be done soon, but it's also going to be developed through the course of actually playing the game. The next thing we have to do before we even start setting up the game to be able to play it is picking the rules, making the rules. Playing a Nuzlocke, you'll like to have, well, 
the whole purpose of a Nuzlocke is to have rules. And rule number one is that you can only catch the first Pokemon you encounter on each round. If it's a randomizer, I'm not too, not too scared. I'll add that in. Now, I do like to add some custom rules in some cases, but uh, of course the second rule that every Nuzlocke has is Pokemon faints, it's dead. Simple enough. So, um, I know I've had in the past additional rules that make it considerably more difficult. For example, I've played where I can only catch Pokemon with Premier Balls. That was hell, and I do not look forward to doing that again. Uh, so, I'm not sure what extra rules to add into this, because of course I want to factor it into the character and the story of the plot I want to represent throughout the story. So, hmm, of course, I'll add in the, uh, the typical dupes clause, which means if the first Pokemon I encounter on a route is a Pokemon whose evolutionary line I already have an instance of, I don't catch it. That should be helpful, at least. I'll put a, uh, a gym level cap. There we go. So, I can't spend too much time grinding. This also means that I'll end up catching quite a few more Pokemon. Ooh, that's an idea. Uh, the, the team in this game are talking about how Pokemon should be released from humans and humans should not have any control over Pokemon. So I think I'm going to encourage breeding. Just as a, a spit in the face to what they're doing. Showing that humans have definite control over Pokemon, though I'm not certain about uh, about how easy breeding will be in white. I don't know when it, when you get the availability to do it. So I'll note down that hatched Pokemon don't interfere with other rules. Can catch legendaries because I'd need it to finish the plot because you have to catch a legendary at the end there. And shinies no okay so that's the the standard set of set of rules I I like to play with with an with an addition is there any other additions I think I could add here I could play a wedlock in that Pokemon are connected to other Pokemon I catch and if one faints then I lose both it, it would be somewhat connected to the whole Reshiram and Zekrom thing because they're both from um, Hurem. I suppose it would make it uh, make breeding more likely. Yeah, only... Ooh. Um, I was going to say that only paired Pokemon are allowed to be bred. But that would decrease my chances of breeding if I catch pairs that are both male or both female. Okay. Gender wedding. If the Pokemon is to be wed with another, ignore catch options until breed option. That way I don't end up pairing Pokemon that can that can't breed due to different egg groups or same gender. That shouldn't be too difficult. And it'll make for a slightly more diverse team, especially with a randomizer. Okay. So those are my rules for this Nuzlocke. I don't have any rules limiting my items, which is good. Don't have any rules limiting my Pokemon centers or marts. I don't have any rules limiting my types. Okay. So this is my set of rules. I will go randomize my Pokemon White. There will be several of you saying, wait, I thought you said you were going to play Pokemon White. And I did. I played Pokemon White for a while, hit a bug that crashed the game and corrupted the save file. So I'm just getting rid of all the information from that and starting anew with Pokemon Platinum, which was my second choice. Hopefully it won't have the same bugs 
well, it'll have bug Pokemon, but not annoying bugs. Okay, so, getting through the intro sequence here, playing a girl this time, because I haven't had a female Nuzlocke lead yet. Her name is Shiro. Which, if I remember correctly, means white. She, her sin is greed. Let's go with greed. Your, na your name is a very easy name for me to remember. It is Null. Because I will not be including you in the story. Okay. And Shiro's emotion is amused. So she's greedy and amused. I also have a system by which to name the Pokemon. A convention, if you will. I just won't tell you what it is, it will become apparent very quickly because anytime there is themed naming, the theme becomes obvious very quickly. And this entire intro sequence I will be cutting from the story. It will not be in the story because I just don't like Barry and the whole thing centered around Barry. Goodbye Barry! So I'm finding you, I'm finding you, I'm finding you. I don't know why he thinks he can find people. So, my randomizer for this, randomizes start Pokemon, uh, it equalizes XP curve, so all Pokemon will level up at the same rate. It makes impossible or really annoying evolutions a lot easier, so I don't have to trade Pokemon to evolve them. Um, what else? Uh, it randomizes Pokemon, uh, trainer Pokemon, it randomizes held items, it randomizes what each TM contains, such that it could be ridiculous stuff like Draco Media could be on the first TM I get, or it could be Spatial Rend or Hyper Beam or something on the very first TM I pick up. And so I've made it. So it's nice, every Pokemon can learn every TM and HM, so it's just up to my discretion to make sure that it's reasonable when I display it in the story that said Pokemon has that, a bit, has that move. I don't know Shiro's typings yet, or her ability. Nor do I know what starters I'm going to be given the option of. Yes, you are Professor Rowan, right? Yep, Rowan. And here comes the second Null. Come on, Null 2. Oh, look at all the exposition. There he is, second Null. And here I go, finding out what my Pokemon is, and I'm going to save beforehand so I don't lose anything. Okay, let's find out what my options are. I always start at the right. So, Wismo, okay. Hoppip, Jay Wits would be happy. And a motherfucking ghost type at first. Yeah, yeah, I'm, t I'm taking the ghost type. The odds that I'm going to encounter a normal type are low, but if I do encounter, like, because of the randomizer, the odds I'm going to encounter a normal type are fairly low, or since it's supposed to be randomizing similar strengths, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, the Nuzlocke rules don't kick in until I, until I actually have a Pokeball, because there's no way I can control anything until then. There we go. Ghastly. Interesting. Well. Licky licky. No, 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 no. This is not good. I'm not excited by this. Okay, what's he doing? Yes, he is going to lick me. 
Wake up, use lick. Paralyze him, paralyze him! Huzzah! No, 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 no! I don't have any potions, I don't have anything I can do. I do not want to lose. I don't want to lose the farm. Oh, man! Not cool, game. Not cool. Oh, there's a thing where you do actually lose to him. Cool. Never lost to Barry, so I wouldn't know. Bye. Okay, well, at least my Pokemon hasn't uh, leveled up. Didn't gain any EVs. So it'll make checking the IVs a lot easier. There we go. My Ghastly is quirky and quick-tempered. Okay then. Good. I'm jotting these down in a, in a document to the side so that I can keep track of everything. This does not look too impressive. Have I been dumped with a pathetic Ghastly? I believe I may have. I also have a tracker on the side for the Ghastly's EVs. So I can at later times attempt to check IVs again. And I'll make a tracker for each new Pokemon I add. Okay, off to the lake we go. Where we run into uh, information that Team Plasma exists. Huh. My starter Pokemon is not native to Unova, at least. He has, she has, a dex entry in all other regions except Unova. Well, a Nash, a uh, regional dex number. Okay. Off we go. Thankfully, if we encounter any normal types, while we can't hurt them, they can't hurt us. Before I do so, I noticed that there is an action replay code so that I can just view the IVs of my Pokemon. However, I require to have two Pokemon before that happens. So, I am just going to continue on until I get Pokeballs to catch my next Pokemon. Whomever that may be. So, what sort of things am I expecting in this area? I'm expecting, nope, not you. The only way I'd be able to catch you is with hypnosis. Carrying on. <sighs> Come on, what? Anything good, anything good? No, just another Starly. Of course, of course. It's level 2, so it might be useful, but I can't even catch it because it's not an amorphous Pokemon. Yes, the wedlock is going to be very difficult. I may just remove that rule. And more dialogue. Yay! Okay, let's have a look and see, shall we? I figured the most likely Pokemon for me to encounter would have been a grass or water type. Ah, oh, yes. The nickname of my ghastly is... Inti. Okay, okay, so. You're going to give me your Pokedex? Yes, yes, introducing yourself, yes. Yeah, here we go, Pokedex. Awesome, thank you. Now go! Let my assistant talk to you a little more, and then you may go. What? Yeah. Uh. Okay, so Rowan is saying that TM27 contains a return. Okay. Let's see what TM27 actually contains once I'm finished my little tour of the town. Now, he doesn't give you Pokeballs straight up, does he? No, of course he doesn't. Checking my bag. No. Nope. I have to buy Pokeballs. Bag. TMs. 
Okay then, teaching Psybeam to my Ghastly just so she can handle herself against normal types. I need to buy myself Pokeballs. Okay, so according to the rules, I can only catch the first Pokemon, the first male Pokemon in the amorphous egg group that I encounter. Now this will be a slight problem because there's no guarantee that I'm going to have amorphous egg group Pokemon in that grass. If that's the case then it'll just count as a separate thing. Okay, here we go. Is there anything but Starly in here? Well, it's not Starly, <laughs> but it's not Amorphous. I don't really get a lot of options when it comes to Amorphous. Okay, now I'm going to kill it. Actually, yeah, I'm going to kill it. And if I... is it, Am I limited to... Is this uh, route limited to two Pokemon? Because if it is, then I'm limited to Starly or Smeargle. I really don't want it to be either of them because I can't catch them or I just ditch the rule. Well, we'll find out. No, I won't track the EVs because I've got the IV checker code. It just requires me to actually have more than one Pokemon. Okay, well, I will go to the lake. The lake will have different Pokemon. Here we go. Verity Lakefront. And you are... Shinx! A cute Pokemon, but I don't think I'm allowed. I'll hypnotize you as I check Verity Lakefront to see how many Pokemon there are available to catch. Um, in the grass, there are two different types of Pokemon. There is either Starly or Bidoof normally. So, I do have a chance. But whatever the next non- Shinx Pokemon I encounter is that's uh, it's my only catch option on this on this section. Wish me luck. What is it? It's a Spinarak. I'm cool with that. Well, I have no choice. I'm limited to this. Now. Ooh. Hmm. Will Inti kill it in one hit? Do I want to risk it? I don't know. I'm gonna go with hypnosis. Oh, it's got it's got insomnia. Yay! Well, I guess I have to hit it with lick or psybeam. Now I'm not a hundred percent on the typings of these things and type effectiveness and stuff. So let's check its type effectiveness. Spinarak is resistant to fighting, poison, bug, grass and fairy. Nope. It is weak to psychic, so we're going lick. Okay, that that's that's good, that's a good sign. We can whittle we can whittle him down? Yes, we can whittle him down. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to risk going any further. I am going to attempt to catch you. You shall be mine. Go. Your nickname shall be... Okay, so I now have two Pokemon. Ooh, beer comes with an item. What item do you have? Tiny mushroom. <laughs> now I've just got this image of a little spinner act carrying around a tiny mushroom. It's like an umbrella for it. So this has been a nice long episode that included some hopefully sped up uh, grinding to try and find who is now beer. Hello everybody, Atlas Editor here. Just 
want to thank you for watching the video and promise that and promising that the next video will actually be of a higher quality something more interesting to watch listen to possibly have some background music maybe an intro maybe an outro i don't know but thank you for watching please come back and keep watching because i'm hoping that this is a series i can actually complete and that this Nuzlocke will be interesting to a lot of you. I have come up with a lot of extra ideas and you'll find out a lot about many of them as the videos continue. So, thank you. Have a good day.